Hello, everyone. It is Mark Berman from TBMI. It is Monday, July 21st. It really isn't Monday, July 21st. It's Friday the 18th. Right? How'd that happen? I'm here with Brent Furter, my uh, TCA friend and peer. Yes. And tell us where you're from, as uh, always. I'm from uh, TV Week in Vancouver online. You can read me at etcanada.com. Cool. Well, uh, we've been here 10 days, I think. Has it been 10 days? It feels like a lot longer. It feels like a lot longer. <laughs> Today is CW Day, and we just came from a session on The Flash, which in my humble opinion is a bona fide can't miss. It can't miss. I think, you know, I think it's probably one of the best superhero shows I've seen in recent history. Um, really good. Um, you know, I, I, I wish I had not seen Gotham before seeing The Flash, because <laughs> in all honesty, The Flash just doesn't have the same level of epicness. Right, right. But um, it's still, you know, it, it, it hits all the right notes. It's yes. a great origin story, lots of action, great special effects. Yes. I think the fanboys, the Comic-Con crowd, are going to eat it up. Oh, completely. And uh, we did get news that there will be crossover appearances mm -hmm. from Arrow and The Flash, and I think The Flash will be as big a hit, if not bigger, than when Arrow was with CW, so thumbs up. Absolutely, yeah. And, and I think it's a great idea for them to do those crossovers, too. Oh, Oh, completely. It's, it's you know, um, which is one of the things I've always loved about TV history. When you think back of shows that always crossed over, which the weirdest thing in my crazy mind is when Dennis the Menace popped in at the back door on the Donna Reed show. <laughs> <laughs> Which, what the heck is this? But let's talk about Jane the Virgin. Sure. Now, my my opinion of the pilot, I'm hearing mixed things. I like it. Mm -hmm. um, it's very different from what the CW has done. It's not, there's no superheroes. I thought it had some very good moments. I think it's limited, though. Well, you know, that remains to be seen, though, because when I watched it, I certainly got a vibe of Ugly Betty. Right. Um, it's very similar in tone. It has that same telenovela, you know, background where the, the derivation... Yeah. Um, the lead actress, I think, is charming. Yes. She works well in the part. The, the plot is, well, a little crazy. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> like mashuga. A, better it's a little mashuga. Little mashuga. <laughs> she gets pregnant, she's not, she's still a virgin. And then, well, by watching, you'll see. Now, you're hearing, yeah. you might hear some noise in the background. They are starting a session on... Uh, I believe CW. it's Supernatural. Supernatural. A huge hit for the... I mean, huge hit for the CW. Well, fans for the CW, here's some good news. The good news is, oh, we have a we have a special guest I'm, here. I'm photobombing <laughs> the TV Media Insight guys. I'll let you go. Really? Right. Yeah, I gotta tell you that. Bill Brio, ladies and gentlemen. This looks good on you. Oh, thanks. Thank uh, you I'm very much. I'm shaving it immediately. Good luck. Looks good. It's like one of those Bob Hope <laughs> walk-ons from The Tonight Show. <laughs> See, that was a crossover appearance. That was a crossover, yes. You know, um, you're, now the lights just dim because they're starting their session. Yes. Um, you're hearing noise in the background, which is fine. And the good news for anyone fans of Supernatural is there could still be a spell according to uh, CW. Sure, and uh, there's no reason why they couldn't. But, yeah. you know, I saw that episode, and that was not that would not have been a good spell. No, it wasn't a good spell. Uh, they need to, you know, maybe take an existing character from the show, somebody who we've seen a recurring character, because there's lots of cool characters yes. in that show that recur, rather than sort of set up this whole new mythology that didn't really make sense. Exactly, but. exactly. So, I mean, ultimately, there's only new, it's only two new shows on the CW schedule. They have a few things in mid-season. Yeah, it's a network that will never be a universal platform, but it does have a small cult following. Yeah. And they tend to do well with superheroes, and my prediction is... The Flash will work. The Zaro will be another superhero. Uh, I think you might be right. But they've been talking about rebooting Aquaman for Aquaman. years now. Right, right. It hasn't quite worked. There was that right. Wonder Woman um, spin-off that they've been working on and being delayed years and years. Maybe that will, maybe that will come to maybe that will come to fruition. But anything on the C W uh, CBS? Excuse me. Their corporate partner was here yesterday. Yes. Did anything impress you? Um, I really enjoyed Battle Creek, which yeah, was written, written by mid-season, right. an old, like a 12-year-old script from right. Vince Gilligan right. that they um, unearthed, and when you see the pilot, you will definitely get a Breaking Bad pilot. Oh, I think so. Now, subsequent episodes will not be written by Vince We'll see whether they can maintain that same vibe, the same level of, yeah. you know, I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful. And then, of course, the question is, always is, where will they actually hear the show? Uh, you know, to me, CBS is when you can slink eat Scorpion Monday at 9 o'clock. Yeah, I think that's got a lot of it all over. It's simply, you don't break up to our comedy block after 26 years of marriage, and it's a little, little hard to take for an audience. So I think they're going to have to find uh, They're going to have to fix it. But Henny, what did you think of Scorpion? Did you like it? No, I did not like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, it, it's, it's too, a little too out there for me. Um, when you have the, the lead guy running around holding a laptop and punching buttons, 
and then in airplanes landing, they're trying to get USB cables in. Yeah. Just a little too out, out right. there for We me. just got a lot of broader than that, by the way. They just turned the lights on. <laughs> um, the McCarthy's. McCarthy's. Did not like that. Didn't like it either. Did not like that. Didn't like it either. Yet another mid-level to unfunny comedy from CBS. And, right. You know, it, it's just, it's too bad they can't get, you know, why don't they just get Chuck Lorre to do another one? <laughs> why don't you just do the Chuck Lorre Network? The Chuck Lorre Network with a day of sitcoms, but, and we finally will be going into the, the, the last season of Two and a Half Men. Yes. Twelve years. Thank you. It's a long time. Yeah. You know, do you know that, uh-huh. um, I'll give you a bit of historical perspective, then we're going to go into see the Supernatural panel. Um, Two and a Half Men is the second longest running live action comedy in history television. It's tied with My Three Sons. I did not know Do you know that. what number one is? Mm-hmm. This is going to surprise you. And if this is before your time, and actually my time, um, then The Adventures of Ozzie and Harriet. That, that's true. That did run for a 14 long time, years. Yeah. That was a rich yeah. show about nothing. Uh, uh, they never did anything. <laughs> Ozzie never had a job. They lived in a beautiful home, but he never worked. He had a barbecue. I think did he barbecue once in a while? Yeah, so we are, um, we're, we're, we're nearing sort of the end of the tour. We have the, the showtime this afternoon. We have Fox coming early next week. Then we have two days of PBS. And then we all say adios. That's right. Until we meet again in January. <laughs> but thank you very much, Brent. Always a pleasure. We're going to head into the supernatural session. If anything comes out of it, I'll tell you next time. Thank you for joining me. Have a great day. I will see you tomorrow. I am Mark Berman, and this is Brent Berg. Thank you, Brent. Take care. Have a good one.